Jim Hall is famous for his very melodic and musical solos and in the examples that I'm going to show you in this video from his solo on Poor Butterfly, I think he keeps changing things so it's a medium swing solo, it could easily be really boring and just some eighth notes but Jim Hall keeps making variations in the choice of rhythms, messing with the harmony and especially he's reinterpreting some cliches that we already know and kind of playing them a little bit backwards and that way creating something completely fresh from something that we already know. And I think this really makes it almost the perfect medium swing solo. My name is Jens Larsen. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and use that to make music, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. This first example, which is the first four bars of his solo, I think already illustrates how he's changing things, how he's thinking a lot as a composer and an arranger when he's improvising. So not only does he play good lines and strong melodies, he's also using really different textures in his solo. The first part of this is really just a basic strong melody using eighth notes and an eighth note line. Uh, so on the B flat minor, he first comes in with this melody, which is really just using a leading note and then the fifth and the third to create a melodic statement. And then he moves to E flat seven. He starts on beat four of the B flat minor and then first a trill and a leading note. And then a, just a basic scale run from the fifth of E flat seven, so B flat up to the flat nine. Then he skips down to the low root, slides up to the sharp 11 and resolves the line on the ninth of A flat major seven, so a B flat. From here, now we've had sort of a melodic statement that's essentially eighth note based. And of course you can go to something else, so he wants to change things up. You could go immediately to some longer, pretty dense 16 note lines, but instead he's using a 16th note rhythm to just emphasize uh, really a few notes on top of the remaining changes. The first one is just the, the E flat over the, the D flat chord, so and then the same type of rhythm, same type of, he's using that rhythm as a motif now to get the root on the C minor 7 and the third on the F minor. So a lot of what you can take away from the examples that I'm covering in this video is really all the different devices that he's using which are not about scales, note choices or arpeggios, but are really more about different textures on top of the solo. And that's actually a really powerful thing because even though you know all the right notes and the, the best chromatic enclosures, then if you're playing all eighth note lines all the time, that's gonna be much more monotonous than if you have a few different rhythms that you can use, if you can use different subdivisions or maybe uh, change between using chords and single note lines like he does. In the previous example, he was using the 16 notes as a sort of embellishment on top of the groove. And here he really starts to make lines with 16 notes, so he's really playing double time lines. It is worth noticing, however, that he's kind of subtle about it and he doesn't really go into sort of double time mode and then plays like a carpet of 16 notes that just takes up all the space and is very dense. He's still really making lines with it using rhythm, but he's just using 16 note rhythm. And I think with a medium tempo like this, I think it's important to realize that you wanna use all the different subdivisions that you can play. In a tempo like this, you can play 16 notes. And as you'll see later, he's also using a lot of triplet rhythms and he's using a lot of different things and in that way creating the, the different feels and the different textures. So here we have first, he starts with a really basic B flat minor line. So just the B flat minor seven arpeggio in fact. Then down the arpeggio again, still not in a dense 16 note line. And then once he transitions to the E flat seven, we get first, we get the real double time line. So first starting on the C and then moving from B flat down to G in half steps, skipping up and playing a descending B flat minor triad. So this is really just a G half diminished arpeggio over, over the E flat seven. And then skipping back up to the flat nine, from here becomes a, an altered line. So from the flat nine, we get a scale run from the sharp nine down to resolve to the third or A flat. 
And here he he actually doesn't end on the beat, so he he ends on the 16th note after the beat, goes down to the fifth. So again, just really sticking to the changes, basic lines, and then back up to the C, and then now he's going to C7, does that on the seventh, and then we get this sort of quick. I think it's actually a pull off and a slide, so down to the third of C7, and then going to the root of the F minor. As I said in the beginning of the video, I think it's quite genius how he is taking cliches that we all know so that we recognize them when we hear them, but he's still changing them so that they sound fresh and surprising. That's what's happening in this example. We probably all know sort of the idea of having a 251 and then turning that into this sort of bass cliche where we have the two chord and then we get the minor major, minor seven, and then down to the major six that's then turned into the five chord. I think I even have a video on using this. And uh, that's also the core principle of what is happening here. But he's coming out on the seventh, and then instead of just moving down, he starts by actually moving up. So first we get the seventh, then he's adding this sort of quick, uh, it's almost not a rhythmical uh, triad, it's just like a, a flurry of notes, something he does quite a few times in this solo, where an, an arpeggio is just becoming something that's not as much rhythmical as it's just really a broken chord and a color on top of the groove. So we get the A flat and then the B flat minor triad. Then we get the major seven, so he's moving the opposite direction actually. Then another B flat minor triad. And then now the B flat, because that's of course where that's going. Then a even shorter arpeggio, down to the major seven again, and then a high F which may have, may, maybe the intention was actually to play an arpeggio, I don't know. And then we get a resolution from the A flat down to the G, so that we have the E flat 7. So in that way he's just taking that idea and then sort of moving back and forth within it and making a new and a more fresh sounding idea out of it. The reason that I can keep on publishing videos every week is that there is a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. I'm very grateful for their support and it's because of them that I can keep on making all these jazz guitar and music theory videos. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page and if you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. Until now, he's mostly been relying on eighth notes and 16 notes with the rhythms that he's been using in the solo. And in this example, and actually also in the last example, he's making a lot more use of eighth note triplets and really playing lines with the eighth note triplets, which is of course also an option. Here we also have him interpreting the harmony a little bit differently. So in the previous example, he was turning the two five into sort of this line cliche type melody and in that way changing the chords. Uh, he does actually reharmonize once in a while. In this solo, he's not really doing a whole lot of it. In this case, he's taking the final cadence and then choosing to, instead of playing the, the basic changes, he's playing a blues phrase. Of course, blues is a huge part of jazz, and you can also apply that and then choose to um, play a blues phrase instead of trying to spell out the changes. You will, of course, find Jim Hall doing this often, and Parker does it all the time, so it's not a really strange thing to do, but it's worth noting that that's also a different way of getting a different sound or a different texture in a solo. And this phrase is using mostly eighth note uh, triplets, so we get first this phrase. Again, note that there's just like a, a slide up to really a strong chord tone on A flat, even though he's playing over an E flat seven. And then resolving again to the ninth of the A flat. And then from here he goes through some different changes. So from, from the A flat we get first a, a C minor seven arpeggio taking us with a slide. Again it's an arpeggio that's just played really fast and just sort of a, a lot of color and some arpeggio notes, not really a rhythmical value in that way. Down to the fifth of the A flat. Then we get an a, a D flat major triad. A trill in the C minor seven, and then down to the fifth of the F seven.
this video is a result of a period I had a few months ago where I was really getting into a lot of the Jim Hall, Paul Desmond collaborations. I think that's a really great example of how Jim Hall plays and works, and especially because they're also playing a lot of standards. So I really like this solo and also Jim Hall's solo on Out of Nowhere is fantastic. So if you wanna check out more of that stuff, then let me know in the comments, and then I can share a Spotify playlist with some of my favorites. This example, I think, illustrates how Jim Hall really moves in a smooth way from playing lines to also playing chords in his solo. And actually just tying the two together and playing chords that are harmonized versions of what is happening within the line. So it's on the first two five of the second chorus, B flat minor, E flat seven. And uh, the first part is a triplet line, really just an extended uh, D flat major seven arpeggio. So first an enclosure, and then we get the arpeggio. From here he moves up and skips up to play an E flat 7 alter, so he goes straight to the E flat 7 alter here. And then repeat the lower part of that chord. And then resolves that to an A flat 6 9. So the idea here is really just that we have the melody. And then you hear the melody move up here and then he plays that as a harmonized melody, so with the chord up here. And then resolves that with uh, down to the fifth of the A flat. Another guitar player who's really great and using sort of these different devices or textures as I'm talking a lot about in this video is Pat Metheny. If you want to check out a video where I'm analyzing one of his solos on a B flat blues, then check out this video. If this is the first time you see one of my videos, you want to learn more about jazz guitar, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. That's about it for this time. Thank you for watching and until next time.